the certificate. And if we move to the actual investment third room, did you know that? Am I the only one who was here before? This is another word by Robert Barry. This is the first word and the second word, Ian Wilson, Robert Barry. And then the third word by Robert Barry. It was always too fast, I don't remember what's that. Anyways, here we are. Please enter the gallery. You know what? What gallery is this? This is the Simonini Gallery. We are in the year 2004. And this inscription on the floor is the threshold <laughs> of the exhibition. Don't expect anything. The author of it is Robert Barry. And work, this work is dated 1999. And it is like an advice. Drop all your expectation before entering the realm of conceptual art. Robert Barry was one of the fathers of conceptual art. In the beginning, he was a painter, and he used to realize very tiny paintings hanging on the wall at a very long distance to one another. And so by painting, he started to investigate the space between the paintings, the void between the paintings. Because to find more interesting than the painting, the object themselves. And so by pushing forward this investigation, <coughs> He wanted to radicalize the dematerialization of the art object. Because what really matters for conceptual art, in the sense of Robert Berry, as, at least, is not the object in itself, the art object, but the relationships among the viewers, the relationship between the artwork and the space, and the very thing of perception. This is why, after painting, he moved to other media, such as magnetic waves or even telepathy, because he was interested in the relationships and the, in the long-distance communication. But what is the most abstract medium? It is language. This is why he moved to language, which possesses the highest degree of abstraction. So don't expect anything. All right, we have to drop all our expectations. Like before the Inferno's door in Dante, Divine Comedy. Abandon all your hope, ye who enter here. So abandon all your expectations, ye who enter the realm of conceptual art. But as I told you, language possesses the highest degree of abstraction because it doesn't show the things as they are, but just indicates a pair. This is what Ermanno Migliorini, talking about the work of Robert Berry, named poiesis. Poiesis is an ancient Greek concept that means the urge to creation, the very impulse to artistic work. But the artistic work as an object is per se unattainable, ungraspable, unreachable. So the artwork can only indicate to it. And so here comes another inscription on the door of a temple. The, inscri the inscription on the door of the oracle of Delphi in Greece. And it, this is about language, the very meaning of language. <laughs> This inscription reads in Greek, Ute lege, Ute crypte, Allah semaini. The meaning of it in English is that the oracle doesn't show and doesn't hide, just indicates, point at things. And this is the very meaning of poiesis and the very meaning of conceptual art. The urge of communication, the tension, the erotic tension to an object. And this erotic tension can be named desire. 
This is the desire for something from the object of law, which is unattainable, as it is. So, we can move. But please, enter the gallery. What do you do? <laughs> we can move to this second artwork. <coughs> So there in the back, can you see the dartboard? Come closer, please. Look at it. This is a chalk circle. The title of it is just circle on the tour. The author of it is Ian Wilson, a South African artist. And he, like, he realized the circle for the first time in a gallery in New York in the year 1968. To be more precise, in the legendary May 68. <coughs> and, I mean, the symbol of circle has many, many meanings. But in the, in the terms of Ian Wilson's artistics, artistic research, the meaning of this circle was conversation. So it was another step forward into the research on language the dematerialization of language itself. So, getting rid of writing and going towards orality and conversation. And this circle is like a gathering of people sitting, sitting around a fire, having a conversation and sharing thoughts and dreams, maybe. But this is also, as a circle, <coughs> The image of zero, nothing, nothing, void, emptiness. And this is one of the other main themes of conceptual art, at least in the research of these artists. As Ian Wilson once said, conceptual, conceptual, conceptual art has to leave nothing, just the void, and you remain floating in this void. And once you are floating in the void, perhaps you can attain the highest degree of awareness and consciousness. But his research moved also forward to somehow take back objecthood. And this is a certificate of a conversation. Because after this work, this is the last tangible work he realized. He just realized conversations on very abstract things, very abstract topics, such as time and absolute. For 20 years, he has been having conversations on the concept of absolute. <coughs> but during this period, uh, he decided to leave the last material trace of such conversations. And this is an example of it. This is a certificate of a conversation that took place right here in Massimo Menini Gallery in the year 1977. It was a conversation on the topic of time between the gallerist, Massimo Menini, and the artist, Ian Wilson. And afterwards, the gallerist who chased it, and this is the certificate of that acquisition. So, move to the third room. <laughs> Again, a O, or a zero, if you want. 
the symbol of nothingness, the symbol of the void. Because in his urge for poiesis, for provoking the impulse of creative action, the artist has to face the risk of nothingness as well. And how to explain this point zero, like a degree zero communication, to put it in Roland Barthes' terms? There are the words of the philosopher Giorgio Gambin that can help us. In the year 1977, again, he wrote, that in each part of creation exists a spark of decreation. In order to create something, you have to decreate at the same time. And so something and nothing are intertwined, entangled. And being and nothingness are inter intertwined as well. And there is another concept that can help us in the understanding of this very simple and complex concept of void. This is the Lurianic concept of Tim Tsum. Tim Tsum is the creation of the world according to the Kabbalah. And the creation of the world by God is not the creation of something out of nothing. It is the decreation of God himself. Because in order to be able to create the world, he had to shrink, <coughs> to vanish, to disappear. Because in the very primal time, before the creation of the world, God's body was occupying the whole space. Therefore, he decided to reduce himself, to shrink, to shrink <laughs> up to the nothingness. So what we used to call creatures, actually, are not created by anybody. <coughs> They came out of this void left by the God's body. And this is why Robert Berry once said that nothingness for him is the most potent thing in this world. So, there is a fourth art work in this exhibition. But you cannot see that. You cannot perceive it. It is like a spirit. And this spirit has been hovering in this room since the beginning. This is the spirit of the question. The question raised by the artist Pino Sega. And this question is very simple. It is, what do you think this is about? The title of this work is, this is about, and it was realized in the year 2003 by Pino Sega. And since the art object has completely shrunk and disappeared, what remains left? What is left? The human body. There's space for us, for our bodies. There are no more art objects, but there's our bodily presence here. And so in order to uh, realize this artwork, uh, it's necessary the presence of a narrator, a speaker, who goes there. May I go there, please? And he has to, <laughs> to do some moves, some things, before pronouncing this question what do you think this is about? And so he has to bend at his waist and move his torso. 90 degrees, all directions, wide-eyed, they're yeah, wide-eyed, <laughs> and pronounce this question, what do you think this is about? And he has to pronounce it with a deep, cavernous voice, like, what do you hey, 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 Dad, come on, that's man, you don't stop it. Are you, this is, this is really too much, I mean, this is really not what I expected, I mean, yeah. Why did you do this? Because we are not in 2004. You, come on, you are not even there. How do you know it? Well, I was there. Who well, are you then? But I was you back then. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, so, yeah, but you know, the spirit is gone. It's just gone. Okay, so now, what do you think this is about? You mean this? Like this? What do you think this is about? This is about painting. I don't know, maybe, maybe you should ask the audience. <laughs> but if you really want to know, well, my opinion. But this is about painting, probably. Um, well, somehow is also to turn something flat. You know? I mean, three dimensional, three dimensional. Um, it's about uh, it's about architecture, like adding another layer or something, and maybe adding another layer to a story. Like um, yeah, maybe this is about theater. You know this this kind of like form of popular traveling show. This is about this is about storytelling. Hmm. Or maybe this is just a revenant.
particularly Toyota and Warren and Gran Turismo and Warren. So the complexity of authorship can be very much reflected in the complexity of authorship in Jean-Luc Goudard, uh, Anne-Marie Mayer, and Jean-Pierre Goran, and CIO. So we have the idea of self-continuation, the idea of the overlapping of place on top of a place, and we have the idea of the complexity of authorship that plays a crucial role in this kind of orchestration of the of the of, of artistic practice. And that's it. Thank you.